Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the middle of redoing the problems and we are on page number 165. Please turn to it. Page number 165, the very first problem that you see on the page there, number 91. Number 91. Let's take a look at it, shall we? Number 91 says Q is an odd number. So we are given some quantity Q. We are told that it is an odd number. We are also told that the median of Q consecutive integers is 120. The question simply is, what is the largest, what is the largest integer in this sequence? In this sequence we, we, we know that we have odd number of integers and we also know that the median of these series of integers is 120. The simplest, the quickest, the easiest, the more efficient, most efficient method here, the most efficient way to tackle this problem is to simply make up a number for Q. Just plug in a number for Q. Now having said that, whenever you plug in number for a variable, it's always a good idea to plug in numbers in such a way, you have to do it in a smart way, in a way that minimizes our work. Since we're dealing with the concept of a median, we could pretend that Q is 5, in which case we're going to have to make a 5 consecutive integers such that the median is 120. Or we could pretend the Q is 9 or 13 for that matter. But that will be sheer waste of time. The absolute minimum amount of work we should do here is absolute minimum amount of work that we need to do here is to pretend that the Q is 3. Pretend that the Q is 3. Because when you're talking about median, this 3 is what you need the minimum here. So, let's, so here we know that the median of these three integers is 120, which means the 120 must fall in the middle, 119 is the one before, and 121 is the largest one. Now I'm explaining too much, you see, because now it becomes too simple. That's it, we're done. The question is, what's the largest of the number? The answer is 120. 121 rather. The answer is 121. All we have to do is quickly go through all the answer choices and see which one works out to be our punchline, which one agrees with our answer. 121 is what we're looking for when we substitute 3 for Q in the answer choices. Let's look at the first answer choice. Answer choice A tells us Q minus 1 over 2 equal plus 120 plus 120. Remember our Q is equal to 3. Our Q is equal to 3. So 3, 3 minus 1 which is 2. 2 over 2 is 1. 1 plus 120. But there you go. The 1 plus 120 is going to be 121. That is what we are looking for. The answer is A. The answer is A. That's it. We are done. Now if you want to, you could actually go through all the other answer choices and you will see that none of the other answer choices will work out to be 120. As a matter of fact, let's quickly work through all of them very quickly here. B says Q over 2. Now as soon as you say Q over 2, you are done. Q over 2 plus 119. We don't have to waste our time to see that that is not the answer because Q over 2, 3 over 2 is not an integer. 3, 3 over 2 is not even an integer and 119 is an integer. So this whole quantity is not even going to be an integer, let, let, alone, let alone being 121, it's not even an integer. That's not the answer. Let's look at C. C says, Q, well there you go, same problem again, Q over 2 plus 120, that's not the answer. That's not even an integer. Q over 3 over 2 is not even, it's not even an integer, plus 120, it's not going to work out. We need an integer, we need, we, we need 121. Before we worry about before we worry about the fact that before we worry about the fact whether or not this quantity is 121, we have to first make sure that it's at least an integer. It's not even an integer. Let's look at D. I'm explaining way too much. Now it's still too simple. D when you work it out is Q plus 119 over 2. When you substitute 3 there, 3 plus 119 over 2, you will see that it works out with 61. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for 121. 
and C uh, and E, you will see that E is also not an integer. The answer is A. Let's move on. Next problem, okay? Number number 92. Number 92. In number 92, we are told that uh, Oh, number 92 deals with a, with a 30, 60, 90 triangle. You must know your 30, 60, 90 triangle, otherwise you're screwed. You understand? There are some basic, there are some basic concepts in math that you have to know by heart. One of them is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The other one is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Let's take a look at 30, 30 60, 90 triangle first before we worry about solving the problem. So here's our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Uh, here is our 90 degrees, here is the 30 degrees, and here is the 60 degrees. Or rather the other way around. Tell me why the other way around? Why, why am I about to erase? I put down 60 here and I'm about to erase it. Tell, can you tell me why? Because in a given triangle, in any triangle, doesn't have to be a right angle triangle, doesn't have to be a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the way the nature created the universe is that in any triangle, the largest angle faces the largest side and the smallest angle faces the smallest side. The smallest side is this one. This is bottom side is the smallest side the way I drew it and therefore I should have put down 30 over here. That will make more sense. Do you understand? 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now I have a mnemonic for it. You may not need a mnemonic but I need a mnemonic here. My mnemonic, my memory device is simple this. There are three kinds of angles, 30, 60, and 90. So very first thing that I do is I put down 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 because there are three kinds of angles. Then I go to the very last one and put down the square root sign. And then you simply arrange them. The largest number, which is 2 here, among the three answers, 1, 2, and root 3, the largest is 2. 2 should face the largest angle. The largest angle is this one, so it will face the largest side, which is 2. This is the smallest angle, and therefore it will face the smallest side, and the smallest quantity among these three is 1. And that is your root 3. And that's the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Let's look at the answer. Let's look at the problem now. So we have a letter. We have a letter that is uh, that is put at a 60 degree angle. We are told that it is extended 70 feet. And we are also told that the letter is 7 foot above the ground. So apparently some sort of a ladder which is mounted on a truck, you know the truck that comes to work on the electric pole or telephone pole from the utility companies and the trucks are mounted on the truck and therefore it's off the ground, it's seven feet above the ground. Only thing that, only thing this information does, the only complication that this information introduces is that at the very end once we find the answer, we have to remember to add seven to it. That's all it is because it's seven feet above the ground. That's all it is. The question simply is, how high does the ladder how high does the ladder reach how high does the ladder reach so here's our ladder here is the wall here is our ladder here the question is how high does it reach from here to here how high does it reach let's call it x here and we are told that it is it is uh, it is at 60 degrees so this angle that it makes is 60 degrees which means this is 90 degrees, which and this of course is 30 degrees, and this of course is 90 degrees <laughs> because <coughs> it's the ground and the wall. That's it, we're done. Two goals on, on from the hypotenuse, and root 3 faces uh, 30, uh, smallest side is going to face 30, 30 is right here, this is this 1, and this is our root 3. This is the proportion in which the, in which, uh, the, the sides are, uh, are going to be. And this side here, the hypotenuse, is the length of the ladder. It is extended 70 feet. So let's call this x if you like. So this is 2 times x, this is root 3 times x, and this is 1 times x. This is, how, this is the proportion of the three sides. And we are told that it is extended 70 feet. So this side here, this is our ladder. This is our ladder, and we are told that it is 70 feet long, which means 2x equals 70. If 2x equals 70, that implies that x must be 35 x must be 35, we are done. And what we, the quantity that we need is this thing, root 3 times x. Root 3 times 35, and don't forget that it is 7 feet above the ground, 
so we have to add seven to it because the ground is somewhere down here. This is this is where the this is where the whole ladder is sitting on some sort of a truck here. So this part here is seven feet. That's it. We're done. This is our answer. So it's thirty-five times root three plus seven is the final answer. <coughs> our final answer is thirty-five times root three, which comes from here. Root three times x, and x of course is thirty-five because two x is seventy because we are told that the ladder is seventy feet extended seventy feet. That's all. Let's move on then. Number number ninety-three. You have to move on because otherwise you're going to stand here and keep beating the dead horse. You understand? That's it. Number ninety-three. Let's see what we have here. It says if Jack loses eight pounds, if Jack. Loses eight pounds, he will be twice as much as S. Together, together we are told that they weigh two hundred and seventy-eight pounds. Their weights together is two hundred and seventy-eight pounds, and we are told that if Jack were to lose eight pounds. He will end up weighing twice as much as S. So there, is, there are our two equations here. The first equation is quite straightforward. Together they weigh 278 pounds, which means Jack J plus S equals 270 S. That's our first equation here. The second equation is that if J if, if Jack loses eight pounds, if Jack loses eight pounds, that's J minus eight. If that were to happen, then the quantity that we'll get here is going to be is going to be twice as much as S. Two times s, and there is our first equation: 278 equals j plus s. That's it. We substitute in there and solve for whatever the hell they are asking for. So let's do it, shall we? So question is, what I want to substitute in for what? Just substitute for j here. So j is going to be 278 minus s. J is going to be 278 minus s minus 8 equals 2 times s. There you go. And this part came from this equation right here. This equation tells us that j plus eight eight equals two seventy eight. That implies that j must equal two seventy eight minus s, which is what we're putting in here for j. That's it. We're done. We simply have to simplify. I just have to make sure that I don't mess up. Two seventy eight minus eight. That's very simple. That's two seventy minus s equals two times. And I thought this is actually very simple. Add s to both sides, and we will find that two hundred seventy. Equals three s's and therefore s equals ninety. What were they asking for? What's the value of j? So they're not looking for s actually. They're looking for j. So that's it. You just sub sub subtract ninety from it. J equals two hundred seventy-eight minus ninety. Two hundred seventy-eight minus one hundred would have been one seventy-eight. So it's going to be one eighty-eight. Well, it's one eighty-eight. The answer is the answer is e. Let's move on to the next problem. Number one hundred, uh, number ninety-four. Number ninety-four. Number ninety-four says that in February, in February we had a sale of. We had a sale of three hundred eighty-five million dollars last February last year. This time, last year this time, we had a sale of three hundred twenty million. The question simply is, what's the approximate, what's the approximate percentage change? That's all it is. What's the approximate percentage change? It's a simple percentage problem. That's all it is. So the very first thing we have to figure out is how much did it go up? It was three hundred twenty last year. It went up to 385. The change is 65. Change is positive 65 because it has gone up from 320 to 385. It has gone up, so the change is 65. The question now is 65 is what? 65 is what percent of the amount that we started out with? The amount that we start out with, with is always the point of reference. Amount that we started out with, which is the last year's sale, because we're comparing because we're comparing this year's sales to the last year's sale. 
So 65 is what percent of 320? Now listen, if you want, you can sit here and make a fuss about it, or you can keep it very simple. Are you able to see right away that 10%, 10 of 320 is 32? That's very straightforward, isn't it? Therefore, if you, want to, if you were to multiply both quantity by 2's, both sides of the equation by 2, that tells you that 20% of 320 must be 64. This is 65. So the question is, 65 is what percent of 32? The answer is, 65 is approximately 20% of 320. That's it. It's approximately 320. That's one way to do it. That's a more of a quick and dirty way. Now, if you want, if you're hell-bent on it, we could actually, quote-unquote, do it the proper way, which is, the, which is to use this equation here. The equation here is 65 is what percent of 320. And if you like, we can actually do it the proper way. But had it been a real exam, if, if I were taking a real exam right now, this will be the end of the story. You immediately see 32 and this is 65, that's twice the amount. 32 times 2 is 64, 32 is, 32 is 10 percent, 64 is going to be 20 percent, that's all. But let's do it the proper way, okay? Uh, I shouldn't have taken up all the room here because I left no room at all to, we're going to have to erase it. So here we go, the proper way, 65 is, is means equal. What is our unknown? Percent means over 100. Off means times and 320. That's it. And we need to solve for x. So x equals 65 times 100. 65 times 100 over 320. Cross divide top and bottom by 10. That, that, that takes care of the 0. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. So we get 5 and 30, 16. And uh, what else can we do here? That's about it. That's about it. This is this is this is this is not getting anywhere here. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, let's let's divide up. I'm doing the same thing. We are doing the same thing with our. I'm, I'm going to go back to. Let's divide top and bottom by ten, and then we have a thirty-two here. We have a thirty-two here because of the fact that looking for approximate percentage change. Thirty-two is about two times sixty-five, and that's this two times ten twenty. It's the exact same thing what we did before. Do you understand? Except this is more of a more of a academic way. Let's move on then. Number 95 on the next column. Now listen, before we actually do question number 95, I want to make sure that we understand the concept behind it. So here's what's going on in 95. Okay, so pay attention. Before we actually solve the problem, let's, let's understand the concept behind number 95. Here's what's going on. If we, if we are given something like this, 43 over 8, of course 43 over 8 can be written as 40 plus 3 over 8, obviously, which of course is same as 40 plus 8 is 5, so it's 5 and 3 8. And of course we know that that is same as 5.375. Now here's the question. Here's the question. When, when, uh, positive integer a is divided by b, the remainder is 3. If a over b is 5.375, what is b? As you can see, this is what is being asked in question number 95 and we'll do the question number 95 in a second. I wanted to do the simpler version first. This is a simpler version. But of course we know where it's coming from, right there it's coming from. So we know that A over B we are told is 5 over 5.375. And A over B, if we were to divide A by B, what we are told here is that we're going to get some, uh, some integer which is the 5 part here, plus some remainder which we are told is 3 which is going to be this part, 3 over, 3 over b. Are you with me so far? This 5 part, n is 5. So we, when we divide, we, we, we are told that we have a fraction here, a over b. When we were to divide it, we are told that the remainder is 3, and it equals 5.375. So our n is 5, and 0.375 must represent 3 over b. This part right here, 0.375, must represent 3 over b. That's all. That's all it is. So, 
3 over B equals 0.375, which implies that B must be 3 divided by 0.375, which is same as 3 over 3 8, which is 3s are going to cancel out and we're going to end up with 8. Which of course, which of course we knew all along, which of course we knew all along that a, 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 the bottom is, a, bottom is equal to 8 because we settled the problem right there. So here's some number here, which is going to be some number a over 8, and if we were to divide that a by 8, we're going to get some number, some integer 5 plus 0.375. So 0.375 must be 3 over b. Do you understand? Let's do the problem now. Let's do the problem now. It says when a positive integer x, when a positive integer x is divided by y, the remainder is 9. Nothing is going to change. It's the exact same concept. The remainder is 9. If x over y, if x over y is 96.12, what's the value of y? You see the exact same concept. So that tells us, that tells us that x over y, that tells us that x over y must equal some integer n, some whole number n, and then because of the fact that we have a remainder of 9, there is 9 over y, because we are dividing by y. And that we are told equals, and that we are told equals 96 point, right here, 96.12. That's it, we are done. So this 96 part that you see there, that's the integer, that's our n. And this part 9 over y must equal 0.12. Same as before, you see? 9 over y, 9 over y must equal 0.12. And we just have to solve for y. So let's go ahead and do it. That implies that implies that y must equal 9 over 0.12. Let's multiply the top and bottom by 100. Let's multiply top and bottom by 100. And what we find is 9 times 100 over 12. Let's multiply top and bottom by 3. So this becomes 3 and this becomes 4. Let's divide top and bottom by 25. And this 4 goes away. And if you divide by 25, how many 25 in 100? 100 has 4 25. There you go. We are done. 3 times 4. Y equals, y equals 3 times 4 or 12. In other words, in other words, this number that we're dividing by x, x must have been divided by 12. The answer is, oh, did I make a mistake? This 12 is not what I have here. Did I, did I make a mistake here? 9 times, 9 divided by 0.12, 9 divided by 12. Did I, it's not 12, I, I, I'm, I did, did something here. 9, 9 over 12 times 100. This became 3, this became 4, and if you divide top and bottom by 4, oh Jesus Christ. If you divide top and bottom by 4, 100 has 25 fours. 100 has 25 fours. 25 times 3, 25 times 3 is 75. Now I'm, I'm, now I'm going to look at the answer choices and I hope and pray to God that 12 is not one of the answer choices because if it is, I was done. It is there. Oh, Jesus. But the mistake that I made here was not the kind of mistake that they were expecting. Perhaps they were expected to make that mistake. But that, that, that was more of a stupid, silly mistake here. But anyway, that's what's going on here. The answer is 75. Why is 75? The why is 75. That's all. What I'm going to do now is actually give you another homework, another problem, very similar to this one for homework which I want you, which I would like you to do which I would like you to try on your own and then in the next video we'll solve the problem together how about that let's do it together what can I give you that next problem right here is the next problem when a positive integer a when a positive integer a is divided by another positive integer b the remainder is Six. If a over b, if a over b equals 
36.15 was the value of B. This is your homework. Do it on your own. Try it out on your own before you watch the next video. Okay? But even when I make stupid mistakes on the blackboard here and make a fool of myself, I hope that you're getting, learning, getting something out of it because that just actually shows how easy it is to make these mistakes. And I should not have made that mistake, but no one is infallible. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.